All right, on to one of the more difficult topics to talk about. Uh, that is NPSH problems. Uh, NPSH problems are actually quite common. The problem is this is a very involved topic and I'm gonna have to simplify this one uh, just for the nature of this video. NPSH stands for net positive suction head and it relates to, in its simplest form, what are the conditions at the suction side of the pump and are they adequate to keep that pump from starving or cavitating? The symptoms of customers who are suffering through NPSH problems uh, the number one symptom we're going to get is a call about noise. Uh, the pump is louder than it usually should be. Uh, in often terms, uh, customers describe a growling noise or the sound of rocks or marbles going through their pump. Um, this is the sound of cavitation. What is also resulting from that? Well, the second symptom is a loss of capacity. Those cavitating bubbles that are being created on the suction side and collapsed on the discharge side, well, those are occupying space that should have been occupied by liquid, and so now our flow is below what we would expect of a pump at that size and that speed. Uh, the third symptom, uh, if the pump is ever tore down for inspection, uh, what we'll often find is that there is localized pitting throughout that pump. Uh, it can be on the faces of the gears, in the roots of the gear teeth, uh, on the head, uh, especially on the discharge side of that head, um, anywhere where we see the localized pitting, as an indication that those vapor bubbles were collapsing and causing damage to the pump internals. Now those three symptoms could mean other uh, root causes, so we're gonna need to run a test. Uh, and for NPSH, the test is very simple. We're going to install a gauge specific to the suction side of the pump. Now this gauge needs to be a vacuum gauge or a compound gauge, some type of gauge that will go below atmospheric pressure to measure vacuum pressure readings. Uh, a typical cavitating pump application um, is going to be occurring well into vacuum conditions, assuming we're not handling any type of uh, high vapor pressure liquids like liquefied gases or other. Uh, so we install that gauge on the suction side of the pump, either right at the pump or on a point on the pipe as close to the inlet port as we can get. Uh, and that gauge is going to read a vacuum. It's going to read a high vacuum if that pump is cavitating. In other words, a low absolute pressure is going to occur. What we're going to do with that value then is we're going to see, okay, what can we do to improve those suction conditions if in fact this is a cavitating pump? Uh, the first thing we're going to look at is the suction piping itself. Um, do we have buildup in the pipes? Is our strainer clogged or dirty? Uh, is there something that has occurred to block that pipe? Maybe a foreign object has fallen in uh, that we need to clear so that that pump is not starving or cavitating. Uh, maybe this is a condition that only occurs intermittently and it is related to either the level in the supply tank getting too low or the viscosity of the liquid getting too high. What we'll often find is that a pump doesn't cavitate unless we get to the bottom of the liquid in that supply tank or, in the case of uh, cold winter months as an example, uh, the liquid viscosity increases and now the pump begins to cavitate but only intermittently uh, when we get to that condition. Uh, so. What do we do to resolve this? Well, we're going to need to look at anything we can do to improve those suction conditions. Uh, can we increase the size of the pipes? Can we clear the pipes or clean a strainer, something easy, uh, to be able to improve how that liquid flows in? In terms of liquid tank level, can we increase the level of liquid in that supply tank? Using level sensors or uh, switches, can we make it so that that uh, liquid level in the supply tank is always maintained? Uh, as far as the viscosity goes, what can we do to control the viscosity of that liquid so that it is always at a viscosity where the pump can uh, run without uh, cavitating? Uh, we can usually do this by adding a little heat to the liquid. Uh, let's say it is a winter month and we need that liquid viscosity to stay low, we need to increase the temperature on that liquid. And we can do that either through steam tracing or electrical heat tape uh, to the supply tank and through the uh, suction piping in order to control that liquid viscosity. Ultimately, if there's really nothing we can do to change the NPSH, that is the available NPSH for that pump, what we may have to do is address the pump itself and look at what we can do to reduce the NPSH requirement. Uh, and this is typically done by running the pump at a lower speed. Now, if we need, need to maintain that flow, we're gonna have to go to a larger pump running slower in order to reduce that NPSH requirement at the pump. But if this is an application where the cavitation is intermittent and we don't really want to go to a larger pump, what we may want to do is look at could we use that same pump but reduce the speed when we get ourselves to these intermittent cavitation problems. Use of a VFD on the pump uh, integrated into some type of speed controller, uh, whether that be manual or automatically controlled, so that we can reduce the pump speed when we get to a low NPSH available condition and keep the pump from cavitating under those worst conditions. Uh, basically, as the NPSH available would decrease, we'd slow the pump speed to accommodate for that and keep the pump from cavitating under those conditions and keep from damaging the pump under those conditions.